Hey guys, I'm Scott Michael from Titan Recording. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about loud mastering and the loudness wars, which has caused music to become louder and louder over the past 20 or so years. Probably about three or four years ago, music streaming services like Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, slash Google Play, etc. Uh, set a standard loudness for all the music on their servers, much quieter than say standard CD loudness. This standard is based off a newer form of audio measurement called loudness units full scale or LUFS. This is different from decibel metering since all it can really convey is whether or not you're clipping the signal in whichever program you choose to record with. LUFS is all about our ears perception of loudness. There's three forms of measurement in LUFS, uh, momentary, short term, and integrated. The implementation of this standard has led many to believe that the loudness wars are over. Since streaming is how the majority of music lovers listen to music these days, it definitely has made a huge impact on how music is mastered now. And though the most popular streaming services incorporate this standard, not all of them have jumped on board yet, such as Bandcamp and SoundCloud. Maybe they will in the future. But due to this, some mastering engineers are still mastering as loud as ever. So let's take a look at the loudness of some mastered and unmastered tunes in WaveLab 9 and listen to how they sound when being run through the new streaming standard. Okay, you guys, uh, so if you go to this website here, Mastering the Mix, uh, there's an article that details the LUFS playback levels of different streaming services. Uh, minus 14 is generally the average. Uh, it also shows you what the waveforms look like after passing through a streaming service. Uh, as you can see, the louder song on the right has been dropped considerably, uh, whereas the quieter one on the left has been pretty much left alone. Uh, this is a great article. Uh, I suggest taking a look at it, so I'll post a link in the description for you. Uh, so the tune I've been asked to reference for loudness for a band that I'm working with, it's uh, called Sultan's Curse by the band Mastodon. It was released in 2017, so that's definitely after all the streaming platforms had set their standards. As you can see, just by the waveform, uh, that this is pretty loud. Now, I don't have the rights to play the audio for you, but I can show you where it sits on the loudest meter. Let's have a look. As you can see, it's much louder than even what is considered the CD standard, which is supposed to be around minus nine LUFS. The song's integrated loudness, or average loudness, ends up being about minus 6.5 LUFS. So it's definitely way louder than what is recommended for streaming. Now that's a metal band. Loudness sort of comes with the territory. Let's take a look at a pop song. I'm not using this as a reference for my project, but I thought I'd show you how even a completely different genre can be just as loud. Uh, this is Lady Gaga. Uh, it's a song called Paparazzi, and it was released in 2008. So I think it's before the streaming standards, but uh, let's take a look anyway. That's actually even louder than the Mastodon song, which was released in 2017, just above minus six LUFS. And it even clips on the true peak indicator here. It's pretty loud compared to what we expect the standard to be. Now, if you were to listen to these songs at a comfortable listening level, you might think they sound fine, really good even, and you wouldn't be wrong. After all, there's no right or wrong when it comes to making music, no matter what anyone tells you. But it does show us that this is how loud we've been mastering for a while, and some clearly still are, and that's okay. I'm not trying to say this is bad, I'm just saying that it is, in fact, loud. So let's listen to some examples now. Uh, these I can play back for you. This is an unfinished project I'm still working on with a band called Killer Shades. So this is just to serve as an example. Let's take a listen to the unmastered mix. As you can see from the waveform, it's much quieter than the prior two examples. That reached about minus 16 on the loudest meter. Now, let's take a listen to the same song, mastered at minus 14 LUFS. No, no, make it your attention. Come on, let's your day to go. 
Now that's just a touch louder, but sounds a bit different with some maximizing, multiband compression, EQ, and some other effects. Uh, now let's take a listen to a minus 6.5 master. Uh, you're gonna wanna turn down your headphones, speakers, or whatever you're listening on because this is going to be much louder. That's a big difference, as you can tell. So let's take a look at all three of these examples when played back through streaming normalization standards. Uh, iTunes gives us a feature called Soundcheck, and it's a really great way to see how your songs are going to come across on streaming platforms without actually uploading anything. Uh, you can access it by going to Preferences, Playback, and go ahead and tick the Soundcheck box right here. Let's take a listen to these examples in the reverse order now. Here's the minus 6.5 master played through Soundcheck on iTunes. Okay, now let's hear the minus 14 master. Okay, and now the unmastered minus 16 version. So these examples played back through iTunes with Soundcheck activated are all more or less roughly the same volume. Uh, the minus 16 unmastered example was actually louder than the others. That's because Soundcheck actually normalizes around minus 16 LUFS, which means it was pretty much left alone. So the minus 14 master is dropped two loudness units and the minus 6.5 master is being dropped 9.5 loudness units. So here's a screenshot of those examples. From the left to right, we have the minus 6.5, the minus 14, and then the minus 16. It's quite a difference. So this is definitely something to take into account when it comes to mastering for streaming platforms versus CD, tape, vinyl, and or Bandcamp and SoundCloud. So my feelings on this are still pretty neutral. There are albums that I love that are just cranked to all hell. And then there are some that I love which are incredibly quiet in comparison. Now, I've worked on albums where any mastering at all was out of the question, and I've worked on albums where they wanted to be as loud as possible. Uh, sometimes the genre can dictate this. I mean, Punk and metal are all about being loud, whereas jazz and R&B, for instance, aren't. It's really up to one's judgment. Since mastering loud won't come across as loud on streaming platforms, it's probably a good idea to have two different masters when it comes to loudness. One for streaming and one for physical mediums or Bandcamp slash SoundCloud. Not all clients are going to know about these differences, so it's up to us as professionals to explain it to them as simply as possible. To me, the loudness wars aren't really over, but at least for those who dislike it, you can take comfort in knowing it's no longer a factor in order to compete. Well, that's all I got, you guys. Uh, I hope this video was informative. Uh, thanks to my client Joe from uh, Killer Shades for letting me use a somewhat unfinished song as an example. Uh, as always, guys, please hit that subscribe button and do the whole social media follows and likes stuff. And if you want to have your music mixed and or mastered by me, check out the website below. Thanks for watching, guys. Later.